Aloha, it's Dave Lawrence, and I'm grateful that you're listening. Today we have a, a very special guest joining us. He has had a remarkable career so far. Many who don't know his backline story would say, a rise from nowhere fast, but a closer look at his resume reveals in short order he's been working hard for a long time, honing his skills for years, doing theater and stage gigs, building up considerable talents the world first was exposed to in a big way via American Idol where he took the eighth season's runner-up win to almost unimaginable heights, from playing live with key members of Queen and Kiss to success worldwide with his album For Your Entertainment and series of catchy singles and remixes. He's got two nights at the Blaisdell Concert Hall, October 25th and 26th. We'll hear about, hopefully, all that and more as we say a warm aloha and mahalo to Adam Lambert. Aloha, Adam. How are you? Aloha. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for being willing to speak with us. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. I'm so excited to come to Hawaii. Yeah? So is this your, uh, you didn't come, they did that American Idol tour that came through here. You were not part of that, right? Yeah, I, I don't, we didn't go to Hawaii on our trip. Um, I was part of that last year, the year before. We didn't do that. Okay, so you never have, have gigged here? No, I, 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 the last time I was in Hawaii was on a family vacation when I think I was about 12, so I'm, I'm dying to get back. <laughs> And I always like to find out a little bit of people's personal experience with the island. So how much, tell me about that. That was a long time ago. Where did you go? Uh, we went to the Grand Wailea, uh, and I think that's on Maui. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and it was, it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. Um, good memories. So I'm very excited. And we're going to be back on the main island this year for the shows. And hopefully I can catch up and get some sun and a couple pina coladas. <laughs> <laughs> so you've never been to Oahu before, where Honolulu is? No. Okay, it'll be cool. Well, we're we're looking forward to it in two nights. Yeah, two nights. That's exciting. I, it's always fun to play a venue a second time because it uh, it tends to uh, really start to feel like home. Right. Yeah, you can settle in. The crew gets a, a chance to have everything really work out nice, and they get less work to do. And really, in, yeah, we enjoy ourselves. We can we can have a good next day off. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally, bro. I totally do. And real quick, since you had mentioned it, uh, I had already planned to ask you anyway. Besides Hawaii, what's the coolest place that you did visit as a kid with your parents? Hmm, Hawaii was definitely up there on the list of uh, top family vacations. Uh, I'm trying to think uh, when, I, when I was a kid. I always liked Lake Tahoe. I visited Lake Tahoe when I was a kid with my family. That was really beautiful. What drew you at a young age to theater? To theater, I, you know, I, I was real. I had a lot of excess energy. I was kind of a hyperactive kid. I, I, I actually just recently went back and watched some home videos, and now looking at it more objectively, I was I was kind of obnoxious. <laughs> 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 I always wanted to be the center of attention, and I always had a lot to say, and I was very um, very over the top. So I think my parents tried to put me in sports to see if that could kind of quell some of that excess energy, and I didn't really enjoy sports. Surprise, surprise, and. Uh, you know, in 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 uh, lining up with with my favorite hobby at home, which was playing dress up and and singing along to stuff and and reciting things, they thought, okay, well, let's put them into theater. And so, at ten years old, I started with this children's theater company, and um, it just stuck. I really took to it. I loved it. I also found a great social outlet there for me. Uh, there were other kids that were expressive in the sense that I was, and um, I finally found something that I was good at. Yeah, it, uh, when I was in college, I went to Emerson, and there were a lot of people like you in the in the theater department, very driven and motivated. And I just am, am always curious, as I as I was then, what is it about the work that gets you off most? You say being the center of attention. Is there are there other aspects? I think there's definitely an adrenaline rush that happens. You know, it's that same type of adrenaline rush that you might get from you know bungee jumping. It's 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 not that different actually. It's. Uh, you, your heart rate goes up and you get all this adrenaline when you hit the stage and you're exchanging energy with an audience. Um, there's something very magical about it. Um, that's definitely one of the major things that I really love about it is it's, it's exciting. Um, also, you know, I think at, an, at a young age, like in, as a teenager and even into my early 20s, I think uh, I wasn't still too, too comfortable in my own skin. I think what theater allowed me was an opportunity to kind of be somebody else and escape my, my actual life. Uh, that makes sense. It totally does. Um, tell me about working with Val Kilmer. Oh, that was that was a trip. I mean, he's a really cool guy. Very eccentric, kind of strange, but uh, great, dry, kind of bizarre sense of humor. And he was actually very, very kind um, to work with. Uh, a couple of us became friendly with him, and he would take us out to eat and uh, invite us over, hang with his kids by the pool. I mean, he was a really cool guy. Oh, that's awesome. 
how does it, have you maintained a friendship with him? Unfortunately, no. I think uh, I think he, you know, has been, has been performing his whole life as well, and it's. I think being in the film industry, from what I know, is similar to the theater world, and that you kind of become friends with who you're working with, and some of those friendships stick, and then sometimes they kind of fade away after the show's done. So, uh, you know, I, I'm sure if we ran into each other, it would be really cool. Uh, I actually saw him very briefly at the AMAs um, uh, before I performed, and uh, it was great to see him, and he was like, wow, I'm so excited for you, man, and I was like, thanks. So it was good to see him. Yeah, right on, for sure. Um, I understand, speaking of your work uh, and, and on stage and stuff, you're pretty multilingual with Hebrew. Can you speak it fluently? I'm, I'm actually not multilingual with Hebrew at all, uh, uh, contrary to maybe popular opinion. I I did a, uh, I was in L.A. just gigging out. I was doing jobs here and there, singing, studio session work, uh, concerts, this and that, and, and a friend of a friend was involved with the the temple there in LA and she said hey we need someone to sing for the high holy days would you be willing to do it I said yeah she said it's in Hebrew and I said okay well I don't know Hebrew <laughs> so we actually spelled it out phonetically on paper and it was actually taped to the floor so uh, that YouTube video got a lot of attention and uh, I think people now think that I'm like you know a diehard Jew and uh, I hate to break their hearts but I, I, I went to temple a couple times when I was a kid and that was it <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You did it phonetically. I love that. Yeah, you know, and I hate to say it, but I did it to get paid. <laughs> hey, a gig is a gig. Yeah, you know, when you're you're a struggling artist in L.A., you take what you can get. Yep, nothing wrong with that, my brother. Yeah, no, nothing wrong with that at all. I do feel I do feel a very uh, a special place in my heart for my Jewish heritage. I mean, it's not something that I practice religiously, but I think that there's such a culture associated with it, and it, it's a it's a pretty cool tradition. Have you ever been to Israel? No, nope, I have not. And I actually am really curious to go uh, to check it out, to perform there. Um, I've actually heard from some fans that I have there. I've done a couple interviews with uh, Israeli publications. And uh, I think it would be really interesting to go over there. Yeah, i got a bunch of friends there and who have family there and stuff. I actually just interviewed Korn. They're going there with Ozzy in a couple weeks. Oh, that's, uh, that's an exciting place. Everybody that I know that's been says, you know, there's something very special about the energy there. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine for sure. Beyond the show, uh, when you were doing American Idol, how much time did you get to spend with Slash? Not a, not a whole lot of time, but we definitely connected. It, like he was just so chill, you know. He was like, you know, I really dig your voice, and um, I, I'm really excited to play with you. And um, we we rehearsed a whole lot of love, and then we did it on stage. And he. He um, he's the nicest guy. He's like so down to earth, which I, I I was actually surprised by. I was like, this guy is like this badass from Guns N' Roses. I didn't expect him to be so friendly. And uh, his wife Perla is also incredibly gracious, and we we maintained a friendship. And I've run into them a handful of times at different LA events, and they actually came to my birthday. Oh, yeah, I like that. Cool. Yeah, he's solid. I interviewed him a couple times, and I'm glad you got the same report card I do on him. Yeah, he's he's just so cool. You know, he just loves music and loves people. Yep, that's the vibe I got. Something else cool about you that we sort of share, your mom is an interior designer, correct? Yep, um, yep. she's kind of a, a Jacqueline of all trades, so to speak. She, uh, she, When I grew up, she was a dental hygienist. That's what she did when I was a kid. Oh, wow. And she moved into design uh, later in life. My dad is an interior designer. I guess the reason I asked is, cool. has it sort of influenced your, uh, you know, like I always notice, like, whenever I'm in spaces, I take a different note of the lighting, the mood, and, and stuff like that. Is that something that has influenced your own perspective, having your mom with that career? Yeah, definitely. I mean, she was redecorating a different room in the house, like, every couple of weeks. <laughs> she she could, just couldn't, like, settle. It was like it was always a work in progress, so I... I definitely took an interest in what she was doing, and, you know, I've always, uh, you know, been drawn to anything with the arts, so I, I, like, watched her paint walls and pick out color swatches and pick out furniture, and I was always very interested in that. Uh, I'm sure it's, uh, it's definitely carved an influence on you. Um, as, we, as we wrap this up, musically, where do Kiss and Queen fit into your, uh, the, the palette of, of sound that influenced you? Queen definitely has been an influence on me. I mean, uh, when you're talking about 70s rock, to me, they're, you know, within the top three or four uh, groups, uh, you know. And, and I think Freddie Mercury in particular was just such a showman and had such a distinct voice. So I, I was really influenced by them. I mean, clearly I, I sang Bohemian Rhapsody for my audition. 
Um, so it was definitely something that I felt um, would be a great way to kind of make a first impression. Uh, Kiss, on the other hand, you know, it, I always knew who they were, but I, I have to be honest, I was never a huge fan. And when they told me that Kiss was going to be on the finale and that's who I was performing with, I was like, oh, okay, cool, I'll check it out. <laughs> I started listening to their music and I got a real kick out of it and watched <laughs> footage and whatnot. But I was never really all that up on them, so <laughs> now I am. <laughs> that's great. I love that. That's the answer to, of answers. So among uh, these rock legends, Roger Taylor, Brian May, Gene Simmons, and Paul Stanley, who you all spent time around and the world got to watch you do it, who were you closest to or did you learn the most from? I think I think I felt the the, um, the most interesting connection with Brian Brian May. I think he he just had a way about him. He was very kind, and we were just talking about life. And he, I remember, he said to me, "He's like, yeah, you know, I woke up this morning, and I just looked out the window, and I was like, you know, it's so great to be alive and to be doing what I love." And he's just he seemed so grateful for his life, and I found that very inspiring, especially towards the end of the idle journey when things were a little stressful. It was nice to kind of hear somebody who's been through it just be thankful for the simplest simplest thing, you know? He's a wonderful man. I've been privileged yeah. to, to interview him, uh, and uh, I've, I can say nothing but the same. Um, a final thing, just a thought, just to see where your head's at on it, more maybe to put the seed in your head, although also to see if you're doing it. I've interviewed a lot of people, and most of them are at a different point in their career than you are, and they've already done a lot of stuff. And you're on your way up, and you're making it right now. And I'm just curious, are you consciously squirreling away cash and resources to make sure that right now, while you can, you save and build a nest egg to protect your future? Definitely. Good question. I, uh, you know, that was actually one of, the, one of the motivating factors of auditioning for Idol, is that I... I've been doing theater and supporting myself that way, and I and I was doing a lot of music on the side and, and underground club performances. And fame in itself wasn't necessarily what I was after. I was after after like security. Uh, you know, doing theater, you make a, a healthy paycheck that you can you know pay the bills on. But I definitely wasn't in any position to buy any sort of property or anything like that. And I had turned 27, and I went, you know, I think it's time to get serious about being a grown-up here for a minute <laughs> to figure out some way to, to secure my future. And so one of the, you know, obviously I wanted to make music and I wanted to platform and entertain people on a larger scale, but I'm not going to lie, I, I wanted to get paid. <laughs> so you are doing it then? Yes, definitely. I mean, I, I have a great um, support of, of money managers and whatnot, and, and I'm trying to watch my watch my back on that so that I, you know, I don't crash and burn it later in life. I love it. I'm excited because I may be buying a house this year, so a dream come true. I'm rooting you on. I want nothing but good things to happen, and I hope you've enjoyed spending a couple minutes talking to me. Yeah, it was great, and I cannot wait to come to Hawaii. It's going to be awesome. I I know some people from Hawaii, and everybody that I've ever met that, that, that grew up there has just the, the friendliest, kindest heart. So I know that the audiences out there are going to be really full of love. Uh, well, you're going to get a lot of support, and um, you know, obviously, a couple nights says a lot that you're that you're able to do that on your first visit. Rad. Well, I uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. Aloha. This is Adam Lambert, and you are tuned to the only show that matters with my good friend Dave Lawrence.